A Little Sex is a 1982 romantic comedy directed by Bruce Paltrow and starring Tim Matheson, Kate Capshaw, Edward Herman, John Glover, Wendy Malick, and Wallace Shawn. Combustion! Someone is bogarting that shit. Oh, goo. Michael has a problem where he has sex with ladies. Using strange soap and strange shampoo and uh, running out afterwards with wet hair. I don't like making excuses and hurting people. And I don't like feeling guilty. Then don't do it. Sir, for all you know, that ass belongs to a student. This is stalking. Hi, baby. Ugh. I was wondering if you were half as good in a sack as you were at that net. This line of bullshit works? I ran the 440 in college. Well, I bet you were real fast in your day. My day isn't over if you care to try. I hate to humiliate grown men. He's doing that himself. I'll give you a five second head start. On one condition. Yeah, what's that? Well, if I catch you, I take you on the spot. Kids, this is sexual harassment. I don't know if this is a race or a chase. No, not here! Oh yes, right here. You need to call the police. You always cheat. And I always will. As long as I get you in the end. Swerve, bro! I guess it doesn't matter anyway. I wanted to know if you'd marry me. You want to marry me? Yeah. I could chase you down every day. We're all falling around. That's a normal Mr. Nice Guy. I want an answer. I want it now. Is that a threat? Oh, it's a proposal. Oh. This guy is as forward with marriage as he is with canoodling. Why don't you just say yes? Yes. Finally, fuck. Well, I guess this movie couldn't afford to show the reunion, just some people from an alley. Catherine is a nice girl. You don't want to hurt her, do you? No, and I'm not going to. The minute the ring goes on my finger, I'll never touch another woman. Till then, I'll be laying pipe. As you're committed to this, you might as well take advantage of it. Here's $82 that says you can't do it. That's a lousy bet. I don't know how far love can take you, but I know you would do anything rather than lose a bet to me. $82? You could buy a house for $82 in 1982. Michael goes to work and inconceivable. Michael and Catherine go to a concert and then have dinner with Daniel Clamp and Philomena. Marriage is a very difficult proposition these days. There seems to be a shortage of uh, what my mother used to call marriage material. You don't think I qualify? It's Michael I'm worried about. Why? Meanwhile, by the cigarette machine. You must admit, there's something very erotic about smoking. The way a cigarette feels between your fingers. The way it touches your lips. The smell it leaves. The stains. Sometimes, in the middle of the day, I'll get the most uncontrollable urge. I'll go into my room, turn out all the lights, and smoke a pack. What the fuck? Is this movie produced by R.J. Reynolds? So you've tried on every size we make. Perhaps you should let your psychiatrist fit you. Just give him an extra large. He has to be able to get it off fast. Wah, wah. Well, don't you worry. We're gonna get it softer and smaller. Keep it in your pants. Sorry. All right, Catherine, you and your father can start now. You pissed off God. Why is it you always think the worst of me? Science is the art of observation. You got lip gloss in your ears. He's a shithead. The first thing I want you to do is go out and get a notebook. What for? Every time you see a woman that particularly appeals to you, put her down in the book. That'll be like carrying around a fucking dictionary. I hate it. What do you hate? The whole thing. 
You get in front of a church full of people looking like Snow White, when everybody knows that the chances of the marriage lasting more than eight years are one in ten. Elope! Holy shit, they're already married? Michael. Mm hmm? Do you really think we're going to make it? Wow. You're asking that question on day one. Then they consummate the marriage. Here's a fidelity test montage. Ha! He has a drawer of notebooks. Ah, uh, here's a case of notebooks you ordered. I mean, if a woman I don't know tries to talk to me, I just look the other way. If there's one thing I just refuse to be, it's a sex object. Me too! Sneaking one? Convenient! And Michael loses the bet. Oh, I better buy her flowers. Nope, too obvious. Great, I love surprises. Okay, you can look. Oh, terrific. Is that a 1947 phone book? Hello, girls. My name is Mr. Sandman. And I'm going to groom you. Whenever I want to surprise Harry, I show up at his office. That's not much of a surprise. Naked? You're kidding. No, he goes crazy. This is how he's going to get busted! Michael works on another tape and this woman shows her appreciation. Here it comes. Bullshit. Catherine goes to see Walter. Ah, I told you so. Did they even make it two months? Michael and Tommy talk, but it doesn't lead to much other than padding the runtime. Your Majesty, he said, bowing very low. Can I be of your service? Oh. On the edge of your... Stand man. This is a fucking cliche. You can't show up at 3.30 when the kids are gone. You have to do it in the middle of the school day. Katie, I understand how you feel. Well, if you did, you wouldn't be trying to talk to me right now. He's even scummy with his apologies. Come on, girls, drive it down the field. Let's keep the game going. Keep your sticks down. If only Michael had done that. Said you went on a field trip. Oh, that was clever. Well, what was I supposed to do? Tell her the truth? I don't think you're capable of that. Burn. Oh boy, hopefully this injured child can save my marriage. Can I get you a cab? I'd rather walk. <laughs> Or my lawyer will. Uh, he's gonna need a couple more cases of paper. Michael commits a home invasion. You know how many women I've been with during that time? I don't care. Well, you may not care, but you should know. To the best of my knowledge, this is a complete list. So help me God, if this fucking works. Catherine, I'll do anything you want me to do. You want me to talk to somebody? I'll talk to a priest, a psychiatrist, a marriage counselor. Stop fucking other chicks! Please. Say something. Michael? Holy shit! The next morning... I knew what you were doing the whole time. You did? I didn't have any proof or anything. But there must be a seventh sense for something like that. Why did you marry him? I'm filing for divorce. Whoa!
I promised you I'd never let this happen. Ugh. You promised me a lot of things. We're to the point that the only way these two are getting back together is because of bad writing. Perfect timing. Why haven't you ever tried to make love to me? Oh, boy. Whoa! And they get it on. Jesus. Walter, I'm sorry to bother you so late. Oh, no. I'm afraid you picked a bad time. Catherine's in bed. Uh, with me. Here's the lonely, sad walk. Mrs. Donovan, can we have the Sandman today? This tape is going to save their marriage. Dear Albert and Duke, I was very happy with you. But a promise is a promise. I'm sorry. Nice fucking story. Catherine stops by the apartment and they discuss fucking other people. Physical. Walter was more physical than me? Well, no. I guess I was. So their marriage was saved by Walter's dick. So, if you can forget about last night, I suggest we try it again. I can forget. Can you? You made a fucking list! Yeah, it was bad writing. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. No sax? All we're gonna get is a fucking flute? There's nothing like a movie where the lead character is a piece of shit. This is another one of those early 1980s films where married men spill their seed all over the place. There's no logic and the characters have no depth. Just a guy motivated by his dick and a bunch of other people standing around watching him crash like the fucking Hindenburg. It's a slog and honestly we all know where this shit's going. They're getting back together. Maybe you'd like me to call the police. 